So I've been playing quite a bit of shooters over the summer, and recently I've even been playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 because it is now on the Game Pass. I haven't really played Call of Duty since Black Ops Cold War, so it's been quite some time. I skipped two and now I'm playing three and it's very jarring. So I'm kind of a new player who's playing it for the first time. From a person that for the past couple of years has been moved more towards the tactical shooter range, I've been playing like for example a lot of Valorant, it's a little bit jarring to go from a tactical shooter like Valorant to then back to Call of Duty with the movement speed and gunplay. But today I want to focus on something that's very interesting that around the time that Call of Duty went onto the Game Pass, Activision has released a very interesting white paper document that is a comprehensive analysis of the role of skill in Call of Duty matchmaking and talks a little bit about how it's been implemented, tested, and its impact on the player experience. I took some time over this weekend to analyze this 25-page document to the best of my ability and looking at it from a game developer perspective and also a little bit as a player who has inserted themselves into this matchmaking system with basically a blank ELO or MMR. If you're curious about what skill-based matchmaking is, this is essentially the algorithm that decides you should go against these people for these specific reasons. Most of the time that skill-based matchmaking is used is of course within the name, is it's based off of your skill level. The idea of this system is to help create a fair and balanced place where players are pitted against other players who have a similar skill level as you. Now, according to this document, it does state that Call of Duty does prioritize connection quality and match time as the highest priorities for its matchmaking system over just skill. But skill does play a critical component in the matchmaking as well, because of course, without balancing skill, you could have the best connection in the world, but still end up in a very frustrating match. Now, on top of that, their matchmaking algorithm also includes things like playlist diversity, recent maps and modes, your current input device, platforms, and also if you're using voice chat or not. As you probably can guess, adding all these things together and having an algorithm try to figure out the best case scenario for your type of play experience is very difficult to do. It's a very complex system. And that's something that I think we all have to just agree to at least at a base level. Now, of course, skill can mean a lot of different things, but according to Call of Duty, the way that they define skill is they base it off of a player's performance in relation to the overall player's population. And they focus on specific methods like KPM, which is kills per minute, and SPM, which is scores per minute. Now, once these skill values are determined, they then convert them into percentiles to normalize skill across different player bases. This is done to ensure that matchmaking times are actually bare Terrible. Then on top of that, these players are then grouped on geographical location and of course their skill and their control schemes. This helps them form basically balanced lobbies. Now that we have that understood, it's time to get a little bit spicy here. So without players knowledge earlier this year, the Call of Duty team actually started to run a B test. This basically means that for a period of time, they try one type of test framework and then they try another one. They ran a deprioritized skill test on Modern Warfare 3, and they did this by loosening the constraints on skill in matchmaking. This doesn't mean that they just straight up turned it off, but they made the gap way bigger than what it normally is. This means that you could be playing from a range of players who are more skilled than you or also lesser skilled than you as well during this period of time. Now they say that this experiment was a repeat of a type of test that they ran at various times throughout the last five years. So this isn't the first time they've done this. They've done this multiple times in a row to see really what would happen. According to this document in 2024, they tested North America and they used a treatment group of about 50% of their current player population, while the other 50% still played with the standard configuration. Now, according to the data on this document, it seems that according to this experiment, when they loosened the skill constraints, the results were that they found that high skill players benefited the most from this change, but a majority of the player base experienced a reduced enjoyment and increased rage quits. And not only that, comparing this analysis across multiple Call of Duty titles, it found that tighter skill restraints actually in general led to better player experiences and more balanced matches in totality. You can find this all in figure three, which, and I'll quote them here, they say that we can observe the percent difference in the number of players returning after 14 days between the treatment and control groups. With deprioritized skill, returning player rates were down significantly for 90% of players. This means that the 10% of the highest skill players always came back in increased numbers, but in aggregate, they saw meaningfully fewer players coming back to play the game. Now, if you're looking at this figure, of course, this effect seems small, but this change was observed with the duration of the test. 
So if you compound basically this negative effect over time with like interest, you'll find that there will be meaningful impact to their total player population. Now this is of course should concern all of your player base, not just the top 10%, as if you continue to let this pattern happen, players will just begin to exit your game in increasing numbers. And this eventuality of kind of like the snake that eats itself, what you'll find is that then the top percent players then become the top 20% of players, which will eventually become the top 30% of players until only the very best players remain playing the game. And as you probably can guess, eventually even those players will leave the game. Oh my God. This is why people constantly say game dead or game populations die for PVP games, as it's plausible that this very pattern might have happened to those games. They also ran experiments to tighten the skill beyond their current configuration, and this actually had the opposite effect, which means that it impacted the high skilled players. You can also find further evidence of this rage quitting associated to not having fun with what they have in figure five, which effectively is showing the skill buckets and relating to TDM blowout. So blowout is effectively if one team is just absolutely decimating another team. And they found that with the increase of blowouts that might occur in TDM, that there was an increase in the amount of people who would just rage quit out of the lobby. They also state that they find this not only with TDM, but other game modes as well. As I'm sure you probably can already guess as the data has already stated and it's further reinforcing with additional figures like figure seven here, you can find that things like kills per minute and also SPM follow pretty much the same trend as low skill players perform worse while the top 10%, the best players in the entire game can basically effectively dominate. So their skills, basically their KPM and their SPM get higher and higher. The lower casual group of gamers effectively just get worse and worse and worse until they start to edge out and leave the game. Also, fun little note that they also point in this document is, I know that there's been this sort of like community belief that Call of Duty didn't have skill-based matchmaking until, I don't know, the last like five years or 10 years or pretty much like after like 2013, then they started adding matchmaking or something like that. According to this document though, skill-based matchmaking has been in Call of Duty since Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. So for some of the nostalgia gamers who seem to believe that like, oh, there, this didn't happen back in Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2 or, you know, some of the more favored Call of Duties, it looks like, yeah, according to Activision here and the developers, it was there. But it wasn't until Modern Warfare 2019 that they were able to increase their capabilities with testing skill-based matchmaking and making it improve drastically, which is very interesting. Now, there is even more in this document, which I'm not gonna go through in this video because it kind of goes a little bit into differences between ranked mode and their casual regular playlist and how skill-based matchmaking is different for each of them and things like Delta Ping, which is the difference between a player's lowest ping data center and the ping of any other data center. So like trying to balance out like matchmaking further with connection and then also balancing like how much does skill weigh in matchmaking compared to like connection, like all these sort of different things that, that kind of go a little bit deeper. So if you are a type of nerd that loves looking deeper into data highly recommend it so if you're like a tbh head ass you definitely i think this is something that is a very interesting document that might give you some additional insights i'll put a link to this document in the description if you're very curious to read for yourself i think this might be a hard pill to swallow for gamers it seems that according to this document that the evidence presented strongly supports the idea that skill-based matchmaking is in fact a necessity within multiplayer games it shows that skill-based matchmaking not only helps in retaining players but also provides a fair and enjoyable game experience that also prevents negative feedback loops that could lead to a declining player population. I think that a lot of times we have our own personal experiences where we've gotten a matchup in a shooter game where we're just like, how is this fair? Why am I fighting someone who's two ranks above me? Or I'm just having to sweat every single time. The data doesn't lie here. And of course, I think it's very important to add a disclaimer that this is only in Call of Duty sphere. We can't just apply this exact same thing and say, well, this should be the same for every other shooter that you might play like Overwatch or Valorant or Siege because not everybody is using the same type of algorithms and some studios might be weighing things a little bit different than what Call of Duty does. But for me, it seems like the biggest complaint about skill-based matchmaking most of the time always comes from the Call of Duty sphere. If I was gonna add a little bit of my own two cents, kind of my kind of truth of what I feel like reading this document and just perceiving the, the community's like zeitgeist, I feel like a lot of this conversation of the anti-skill-based matchmaking debate has come from a lot of the content creator space. 
it was a different period of time, I feel like, when Halo 2 and Halo 3 had its matchmaking system and content creation wasn't such a big thing. Since Call of Duty and a bunch of other things had gotten popular through Twitch streaming, through content creator YouTube, very skilled players that have produced content that is about dropping 50 bombs, 60 bombs on people, getting a nuke, showing that I'm like really skilled at the game. And these things require you to be able to dunk on people who effectively have uh, a, a lack of game awareness sometimes, not that good uh, mechanical skill that at a certain point in time you felt like this was normal and as your skill became more fine-tuned and the system found out that you know things were too easy for you and they try to put you in a more similar skill bracket that for a person who takes content creation as a job then you're for eight hours straight sweating quote-unquote sweating your butt off the entire time and you're not having fun these things effectively I think have twisted I think into just becoming a community truth where it's just, well, I feel this type of way and I need to associate this type of feeling I have. This person also feels this type of way, so there must be truth to that. But the data doesn't back up those things. And reading this document, it reminded me of a game I used to play a long time ago, not even a long time ago, but a while back, which is Titanfall 2. And I know a lot of people associate Titanfall 2 dying to, you know, its release date. But I also think a part of Titanfall 2 never being able to like fully regain its like player base or ever stabilizing and why it just kept getting smaller and smaller was because of this problem. If you play Titanfall nowadays, I'm a person who played Titanfall six months, years after the game had launched, and I even played on the North Star client. If you play Titanfall today, as a new player who's never played Titanfall 2 multiplayer before, you're gonna get stomped because the only people who are left in that player base is the top skill percentile. And I think that was the issue that Titanfall 2 had is that it couldn't retain its casual player base because the top skill percentage devastated the lower skilled players and made them not want to play the game again. I think right now as you're watching this video or listening to this, you probably can think of other games like this who might have had the exact same fates and be like, whoa, that actually might make a lot of sense. But I also think that the data is proving that it might be a mentality thing too. I think that you have to remember when you're on this internet, you are part of a much smaller vocal community compared to the vast casual like player base of a game, of a genre. If you're watching this video, for example, you care, or you're at least tapped into the gaming community to a point that like, you understand what these concepts are or what this conversation is about. But if you ask your friend from work who works nine to five and he comes home and he just plays a game, most of the time, he doesn't know anything about this. He doesn't care about this. And I think there's a lot of people that kind of forget that. And when they look at um, other stats or they realize, you know, oh, a lot of people don't beat their games or a lot of people don't play a lot of new games. They only play, you know, like what TBH is going through right now is you're starting to have that realization that we are such a part of a smaller group of actual people who are fully engaged in these products compared to the vast player base, which relatively isn't. And once you understand that, I think it puts a lot of things into perspective for yourself and makes you realize that, hey, maybe I am not necessarily looking at this with the full picture in mind. Even think about it from different genre perspectives. I really don't hear people in the fighting game community complain about skill-based matchmaking. And because that's really a mindset difference, it's a mentality difference for a lot of fighting game players compared to shooting fans. For example, if you take the mindset of a Valorant player who plays in rank and competitive and you compare it to, you know, a Call of Duty player who's like a pub stomper, their mentalities are completely different. As someone who like plays Valorant, I would be scratching my head if the game was like, we don't need skill-based matchmaking for a tactical shooter. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Or a fighting game. Do you imagine if there was no skill-based matchmaking in a fighting game? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. For those people, it seems kind of insane. But for maybe this area of shooters, for Call of Duty and for other kind of casual shooters, skill-based matchmaking seems like the devil to them. And if there's always the argument, of course, of I don't want to sweat every time. I totally understand that. It's definitely something that I empathize with. This is not the only game that exists. You don't have to play this game every day. You don't have to make this game your entire life and personality. There's so many shooters out there. There's so many other games out there. Try something different. Take a break. Stop taking this shit so seriously, man. It's just a video game at the end of the day.